So welcome back. I want to get right into what we were talking about last time and do some demos today. So the key point that we made in the last video is that if we have a sound wave produced by a clap or a musical instrument or anything else, then the information that is most relevant to what we actually hear is the history graph of the displacement of versus time for that sound wave at the location of our ear. So if we think about hitting hi-hat here, that produces some wave pulse. What is important for what we actually hear is just how does the displacement of air at the location of our ear vary. Okay, and so we can make a graph of that. It might look something like this. If we had a tuning fork, it might look something like this, where notice this is a very short time on the axis. And in general, whatever sound we have, we could make a time graph of what the displacement of air versus time at the location of our ear would be. And that time graph would contain the complete information about what that ear is going to perceive. Okay. So this is very interesting. Even if you had an entire orchestra playing a symphony, then you can represent the sound of that as perceived by your ear just by one particular graph, one particular function of time. So what I want to do in most of the rest of the video is just demonstrate this for some examples of sounds. And so we'll actually produce real time graphs corresponding to actual sounds. And the way that we can do that is using an instrument that all of us have access to, which is a microphone. There's one on your computer or your laptop or your phone. And I'm not going to get into the details of how the microphone works, but the thing that we can that we need to know that helps us understand what's going on is that the microphone somewhere inside it there is a membrane so just a thin piece of material and that is basically acting like an artificial eardrum so when your sound wave comes along and you have variations of the pressure of the air outside the membrane that will exert varying forces on the membrane and cause it to be displaced in almost the same way that the layer of air would be displaced if you didn't have the membrane there. Okay, so the displacement of the membrane is pretty much the same as the displacement of the air that would have been there. And so if we could somehow keep track of the displacement of that membrane, that's a way to record the history graph for our sound wave. And that's exactly what the electronics associated with the, with the microphone do. So as the membrane moves, then there's some electronics that convert that motion into an electrical signal. And that electrical signal can be stored on our computer, for example, and then we can make one of these time graphs that actually shows the displacement of the membrane as a function of time. So there's a particular piece of software, there's many pieces of software that will that will do this. A particular one that is free that you can get for Windows or Mac is called Audacity. Um, I'll put a link for that below in case you want to check it out. And so using Audacity, we can just make a recording and display exactly this time graph of the location of the membrane. So it's easy for us to actually produce these history graphs uh, that I've been talking about. So I'm gonna start with a simple sound. I'll make a recording of a clap and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so, so this is the time graph of the displacement of the microphone's membrane versus time for our clap. And so we should zoom in to see this better. Everything is smushed together in a very short interval of time. If we want to see how, how long was that clap 
um, I can I can look down here and so it started around 0.8 seconds and it finished at um, around one second so the whole thing from when you first heard it to the last uh, little remnant of sound was probably less than a fifth of a second okay but what does the graph look like during the clap and so we can just use this feature up here to zoom in on that and see what it looks like. Okay, so here, here it is. Um, it's pretty messy. So it's, you know, almost looks kind of random. Um, there are peaks and valleys, but they're not really, there's not really any order to it uh, that I could see. Some of them are higher, some of them are lower, some of them are closer together, some of them are further apart. And so this is kind of characteristic of general noise, which is not musical notes. Okay, so this is, this is like some random noise that you would make if you looked at the displacement versus time, then it would look somewhat random like that. Now at the large scale, we do see that the amplitude of these oscillations is high and then it becomes lower. And so that's indicating that the overall volume of this sound of the clap, it started high and then there's a little bit of noise left afterwards. Okay, so let's do another example, which is an actual musical sound or somewhat musical because it's going to be me humming so I'll just uh, I'll just hum a note and then we'll have a look. <clears throat> okay. So here is the here's the time graph, but in order to see the details again, we're going to zoom in. Okay, and so you see that this one is much different than the last one because instead of essentially random up and down there's a definite pattern here and it just repeats and repeats and repeats and the pattern that repeats is this pattern of displacement where it it goes up and then down a little bit then back up and then down a lot and then it repeats kind of amazingly it just looks like a bunch of m's which was more or less the sound i was making mm. So, um, so that's, that's the shape of the displacement versus time graph for humming. And so if you ever had a displacement versus time graph that looks like this, then it sounds, it would sound just like the, the humming. And I just want to emphasize, um, that this is happening really fast. So I zoomed in a lot. If we look at that time, it's 0 0.756 seconds. And then this time is 0 0.766 seconds. And so that entire thing is taking about <clears throat> one one hundredth of a second. So the period is about a hundredth of a second. And that means the frequency that I was humming was just about 100 Hertz. So let's do another example of a musical note and we'll see what the difference is between my humming and in this case it's going to be a note that I play on the recorder okay and so obviously those two things sound quite a bit different kind of the only common thing is that is that they are going to be musical notes okay so let's let's go ahead and see that okay so let's zoom in on the time graph for that recorder note. Okay, and you, so you see that's a much smoother um, function of time. Again, it's periodic. In this case, it's just a little bit smoother than the M. It has only the one up and down, uh, but it's still not very close to a nice pure sinusoidal wave. So just as our final demo, what I'm going to do is show you what the sound looks like from this tuning fork. And so the tuning fork is special because the vibrations of that tuning fork 
are almost exactly simple harmonic oscillations. And so that was the case that we expected to actually produce sinusoidal time waves. Okay, so we'll zoom out one more time And then we'll go ahead and make a time graph of, of this tuning fork sound. Do that one more time. Okay. Oops. Need to press stop. Uh, let's delete that bit there. And we're just going to zoom in on the time graph for the tuning fork. Okay. And you see that it is almost a perfect mathematical sinusoidal wave. Okay. It's just like we expected a sinusoidal wave would look like. In musical language, this is what we would call a pure tone. And so a perfect harmonic oscillator, if that's what's causing the sound, then that will produce a sound wave whose history graph looks like this pure tone. And to our ears, that sounds, that uh, well, it's, it sounds like a pure tone. It's, it's what we mean by a pure tone. So that's, that's it for the demo. What I just want to emphasize again from that demo, which we already saw in an earlier lecture in the course, but it's a really important concept the main distinction between musical notes and just ordinary sounds are that these musical notes are periodic. If you look at the displacement versus time of the sound wave, of the air in the sound wave, then you get these almost perfect periodic functions. And regular sounds that are not musical notes, they're much more random and you don't see this nice periodicity. Okay, so pretty much any periodic history graph will sound like a musical note as long as its frequency is in a certain range that we'll discuss. So in the next video, I'm going to start talking about what, uh, what are the properties of these different time graphs that correspond to the different qualitative properties of musical sounds that would distinguish, say, the sound of a trumpet or a recorder or my humming. And so we want to kind of figure out what is it about these graphs that translates into different kind of properties of sounds.